Hello everyone and welcome to Montgomery Hardin Wellness. I know you, uh, it's been a while since I've been on live on my Wednesday evening show. Uh, I've been working very hard working on new show content material that I'm looking forward to announcing to you very soon at a near time. But tonight what I want to do is talk about a common condition, uh, health condition known as hypertension. Many of you are aware of it. Uh, you may have relatives with hypertension. You may have hypertension. And hypertension is often referred to as the silent killer. Uh, individuals' blood pressure can be very elevated. You won't have symptoms. Um, many individuals are treated by their primary care physician for it. However, there are three simple things that you and your doctor may be overlooking when you're managing the hypertension. And by simply addressing these three simple oversights, you can turn your elevated blood pressure into a blood pressure that's normal. And so hypertension doesn't have to be as difficult to treat. And we're going to cover this tonight at three major areas. And so hypertension, three major oversights. First and foremost, uh, many of you probably know, if you've watched this channel, uh, that the first oversight that many physicians have has to do with nutrition. Now, it seems obvious, you know, we talk about you are what you eat, but nutrition is very key. But I want to get into some specific points about nutrition, not just to say low sodium, eat healthy, etc. The specific aspects of the food you consume and specific as aspects of the food that you should not consume in order to control your blood pressure. So first and foremost, uh, hydration is important. Now we think about hydration in the sense of, well, you know, I drink, you know, three bottles of water, I'm always drinking water. Uh, but hydration is important uh, because it improves your body's function at the cellular level. Uh, each cell needs to be well hydrated. Uh, you see here a simple diagram of a cell with a nucleus. Uh, it has lots of organelles, and there's a communication process that goes on within the cell. If the cell is dehydrated, if you will, or not well hydrated, the flow of, of special biochemical substances within the cell uh, is impaired, uh, and other functions of the cells can be impaired. So hydration is important, uh, first and foremost, at the cellular level. Uh, secondarily, uh, it's important for optimal renal function or optimal kidney function. Well, why is that important? It's important because the kidneys regulate lots of important hormones in the body. It regulates your minerals and electrolytes. So if the kidneys are not getting adequate flow from the heart because of dehydration, then the kidneys will send out special hormones, uh, and namely renin, which causes the production of another hormone called angiotensin II. And this hormone is a very potent vasoconstrictor. So what happens is if you're not well hydrated, what the kidney is sensing is that you are in shock. You're in, in, in cardiogenic shock or you're, you're uh, dying of thirst. And so it's going to preserve sodium which is a problem. It's also going to constrict your blood vessels, which increases blood pressure. Because if the kidneys think that you're in shock, it's going to increase blood pressure, and therefore the prep blood pressure will be elevated just with uh, dehydration or inadequate hydration. The other aspect of nutrition has to do with the foods that you're eating that you shouldn't eat, excess processed foods. Now, we all know what those foods are. Uh, they're the frequent of the fried foods and the, the greasy foods, the processed carbohydrates, the excess animal products and the like. Uh, they uh, cause increased inflammation. Uh, they can cause increased oxidative stress. And by that, I mean an increase a number of toxic chemicals in your body. That increases oxidative stress, uh, which causes blood vessels, blood vessels to constrict. They also contribute to dehydration, which we just talked about, uh, and also contribute to excess sodium retention. You're consuming these foods that have lots of sodium in it, 
But it's not the sodium in these processed foods. Uh, it's not only the sodium in these processed foods, but it's also the toxic chemicals, the dyes, the preservatives. These all contribute to this condition known as oxidative stress. And so with increased oxidative stress, you have worsening elevated blood pressure. Now, the other thing that you may be overlooking is insufficient amount of foods that contain a molecule called nitrate. Uh, nitrate containing foods are leafy greens, uh, beets, uh, and certain fruits uh, that contain nitrates. Uh, and these nitrate molecules are converted to nitric oxide by bacteria in our body. Nitric oxide is an important molecule that helps the blood vessels dilate and it can help reduce blood pressure, improve flow to the kidneys, improve, improve flow to the heart. Uh, and it also improves the function of the inner lining of the blood vessels known as the endothelial cells. So foods that are high in nitrate are important. And this is a naturally containing nitrate, not the nitrites uh, that are added to foods as preservatives, but naturally containing nitrates uh, in foods. So these are the nutritional components that are really important. The next one category, number two, is medications. So you may be prescribed medications to control your blood pressure, which may also be working against you, but there may be other medications that you're taking that may work against you as well. Uh, there are certain medications that we know that deplete magnesium. Uh, for example, uh, diuretics uh, deplete magnesium. Antibiotics can deplete magnesium. Um, certain types of uh, uh, immunosuppressant drugs, uh, these are calcineurin inhibitors. These are special drugs for individuals who have kidney transplant or other types of uh, organ transplant. Uh, certain chemotherapy drugs can deplete magnesium. Proton pump inhibitors are very commonly prescribed, uh, but they reduce magnesium absorption and can contribute to elevated blood pressure. And of course, insulin or insulin mimicking drugs can also reduce magnesium uh, absorption contributing to or resulting in elevated blood pressure. So you may be taking medication after medication after medication, but you're taking other medication that may be contributing to magnesium depletion. Low magnesium contributes to elevated blood pressure. How about medication that affect the microbiome? The microbiome is the healthy bacteria that live in and around us, and they carry out very important roles. One important role that the microbiome contribute to is to convert the nitrate from natural nitrate in our foods to nitric oxide. And so healthy microbiome can contribute to uh, increased blood pressure. If you're taking medications such as statin drugs, uh, metformin, uh, laxatives, uh, proton pump inhibitors uh, can also have an adverse effect on statin drugs. You know, proton pump inhibitors, uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, reduce magnesium. So here's another mechanism by which it can contribute to elevated blood pressure. So you hear me talk about polypharmacy uh, or excess medication consumption. This is some of the mechanisms by which excess medications can contribute to other problems, in this case, uh, hypertension. And lastly, with medication and medications that directly increase blood pressure, uh, these are medications such as decongestants. Many of you are aware of this. Uh, NSAIDs are non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. These are medications typically used for uh, arthritis or any types of pain. Uh, steroids uh, can increase blood pressure, antidepressants can increase blood pressure and immunosuppressive drugs uh, can increase blood pressure directly, um, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, and of course, oral contraceptives, many individuals on oral contraceptives, they can not only contribute to blood clot formation, but they can also contribute to elevated blood pressure by some direct mechanism. And who doesn't take um, acetaminophen on a regular basis? Many individuals take Tylenol for a slight headache or the like. These medications can directly increase uh, blood pressure. So the last area is oral hygiene. And many of you may not have thought of this, but this is an area 
that is very common and the two components of oral hygiene that can contribute to elevated blood pressure. Uh, and that's your toothpaste and your mouthwash. So if you have an antiseptic mouthwash, what it does, it kills the bacteria at the back of your tongue. And these bacteria at the back of your tongue are important for converting the nitrates in the natural uh, nitrate containing vegetables to nitric oxide. So if these bacteria are killed, you don't convert nitric nitrates to nitric oxide. And this is an important pathway in individuals as we become older. And of course, fluoride containing toothpaste, again, will deplete the bacteria in the back of your throat. And of course, deplete the bacteria that's helpful to convert nitrates to nitric oxide. And we've actually done studies with individuals who use antiseptic mouthwash versus those who don't, and saw a clinical difference in terms of blood pressure control, but also other conditions such as stroke and cardiovascular events. So uh, these antiseptic mouthwashes, uh, fluoride contained toothpaste, uh, there are many mouthwashes that do not have an antiseptic component and there are fluoride free toothpaste that you can use. And this is the important pathway that I'm alluding to. Pathway one is a conversion of a um, molecule L arginine through nitric oxide synthase and it's directly converted to nitric oxide. This is the pathway that's straightforward. It's very common when we're young. But when we get older, this pathway becomes less effective. And we rely on pathway two more, which is a little bit more complex. And as you see here, bacteria uh, contributes to, you have the cyclical process. We have nitrate, and that's nitrite there, but nitrate goes converted to nitrite, which then gets converted to nitric oxide. But you have a component here where the bacteria has an important role in helping this biochemical process uh, take place. And also bacteria is here in the second phase from nitrite to nitric oxide. So here you have the biochemistry of, of how you make nitric oxide that contributes to controlling your blood pressure. And um, there are three major areas that you need to consider when you're looking at elevated blood pressure and oftentimes when your doctor is putting on you know, the second, third, or fourth antihypertensive medication, think to yourself, what else can I do to help naturally control my blood pressure? I've had many situations with individuals where we will just simply change their mouthwash or simply remove a medication that depletes magnesium and place them on a magnesium supplementation and the blood pressure becomes better controlled. Uh, we have individuals that we hydrate more, uh, the blood pressure becomes very controlled and we're able to wean the blood pressure medications. Oftentimes we'll remove a diuretic, the blood pressure becomes better, better controlled. So keep these tips in mind. I hope this will help you. And of course, if you're new to this channel, uh, please subscribe, like, and share. And of course, those of you returning, like, and share. And of course, everyone hit the notification uh, bell uh, so that you can get important announcements of future shows. And I'll be making some great announcements of future shows and more content that we're developing uh, in the very near future. So until next time, y'all take care.